فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روبا الخير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد We commence by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created us, who nourishes, cherishes, provides, protects, cures the one who is in absolute control of all aspects of existence We praise Him, we praise Him constantly during days of ease we continue to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. During days of difficulty, we still continue to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillahi awwalan wa akhira wa zahiran wa batina. We send blessings and salutations upon all the messengers who were sent to us from the beginning to now in order to remove us from the darkness and bring us to the light. More so, the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we ask Allah to bless him, to bless his companions, his household, to bless every one of us and our offspring, those to come up to the end. May Allah bless us all and keep us steadfast on the deen. Amin. My brothers and sisters, what is your purpose on earth? Why are you here? Why do we see people being born and after some time they grow older and after some time they pass away? Once you are born, the next thing you know for certain that will occur is death. Do you agree? Even if you don't agree, it will come to you. Subhanallah. Even if you don't agree, it will come to you. Even if, if you are wealthy, it will still come to you. If you are healthy, it will still come to you. So it means there is a greater purpose for our creation on earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not made us without purpose. Allah created us for a reason. That is why life is so short. 60 to 70 years is nothing. In actual fact, it is nothing compared to the hereafter. If you look at those who have died or passed away 200 years ago, and you ask yourself, question number one, what were their names? We don't even know. Do you agree? If I tell you today, please name for me 20 people who died 200 years ago. I don't think any of us seated here will be able to do that unless we go back to the books where the people who are buried are actually written by name. Anyone wants to try to name me 20 people who died in your community 200 years ago? Don't even attempt it, subhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. It means when I die 100, 200 years later, perhaps they may never know who I was. We don't even know our fourth grandfather, sometimes our third grandfather. But he must have been a strong man, subhanallah. And he must have been, inshallah, someone who was perhaps more powerful than us. With us, small change in weather, we become tired, we are weak. With those, they used to work very hard from morning to evening in the fields and they were still active by the evening, subhanallah. So it goes to show, like I said, point number one, we cannot remember those who passed away 200 years ago. Point number two, those who died 200 years ago, they lived for an average lifespan of 70 years, 60 to 70 years. That was shorter than the time they have already died for. You know what that means? They have been dead longer than they were alive. So which life should you be preparing for more? The one that is very short, 60, 70 years? Or the one that is so long that there are people who died a thousand, two thousand years ago. They are gone, we don't even know them. Good news to those from among them who prepared for the day they were going to die because the after death is far longer than that short period of time when you are on this earth. So do not allow the devil to deceive you. Develop a link with he who made you because you are going to return to him who made you. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us right at the beginning in Surah Al-Baqarah, the opening few pages, 
so that you can achieve consciousness. Worship Him. The losers are those who don't worship the Almighty who made them. And if we were to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we would realize something very quickly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants to be worshipped alone. And He says, none other than me should be worshipped. None other than me should be worshipped. Allah says, every time He sent a messenger, He told that messenger to tell the people to worship Him alone. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So those who have chosen to worship with Allah, some other issues or matters or deities, they are at a loss. Those who have chosen to worship besides their maker, they are at a loss. The only ones who are successful are those who worship the one who made them alone. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us something through a hadith Qudsi. Allah I am the greater of, or I am independent of the partnership that people create. When there is a partner, the greater one walks out and says, don't worry, you can enjoy that on your own. I don't need to be with you as a partner. So Allah says, anyone who has done a deed wherein he or she associates partnership with Allah, he says, I don't want it, rather give it to that one. I don't need it. I don't need it, give it to that one. So we are at a loss. And we will quickly realize that in order for us to know what that maker wants from us, he has sent to us messengers. Subhanallah. لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُو يَتْلُو عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ What a beautiful verse. Allah says, Indeed, Allah has favored the believers. Allah did a favor to the believers when He sent to them from amongst them a messenger in order to guide them, in order to purify them, in order to teach them, and so on. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yet, before that, they were misguided. Subhanallah. So this goes to show how important it is for us to follow the footsteps of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People say Islam is a religion that has many rules and regulations. I promise you, all of those rules and regulations are there in order to help us lead a happy life in order to ensure that whatever we do, we will be content, we will be happy. This is why we have been taught something known as a riba bil qaba. To be happy with the decree of Allah, the destiny that Allah has chosen for us. You lose something, you are happy. You gain something, you are happy. You lose something, you are happy because it was the decision of Allah. Even though human nature might make you sad, that sadness will never go to the point of questioning the decree of Allah. When you are happy because you have gained something, 
that happiness will never take you to the degree where you think you can transgress the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember this. The reason is sometimes when we have wealth, when we have authority, when we have position, when we have something more than others, shaitan leads us to commit sin because I'm a rich man, because I'm a man in authority, because people look up to me, because I have people working for me, etc. When that happens, we have lost. But rather, the more you get, the more humble you become. The more you realize, Wallahi, my brothers and sisters before us, there were so many people who had a lot, but they were more humble than us. Right now on earth, there are people who have much more than we have, but Wallahi, they fulfill their salah. They fulfill their salah. They are beautiful people. They do not perpetrate sin. I know of a wealthy, wealthy man. He sits with the 700 people who work for him in such a way that no one recognizes who is the worker and who is the employer. No one knows. You have to be told that this person is actually the boss and the rest of them are actually working. Subhanallah, what humble characteristics. Whereas with us, we have five more CDs than the other person. And already you say, mm, yes, it's me. I have more, you know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect myself and yourselves from haughtiness, from arrogance, and from transgressing when Allah has blessed you. You know, when you have the day of Eid, what is the day of Eid? It is a day given to you because of your ibadah to be happy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After the month of Ramadan, you were fasting, you were reading Quran, you engaged in extra voluntary prayer known as Taraweh, etc. And for the whole month you did that, when you completed, Allah says, Allah has given you this beautiful month of Ramadan. You complete it and you declare the takbir, the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are thankful to Allah. That is the way you show gratitude to Allah for giving you a month wherein He has cleansed you. But I tell you, the day of Eid is a day of happiness given to us by Allah. But we make on that day, in a lot of cases, shaitan happier than anyone else. I'll tell you why. Those who don't drink in the month of Ramadan, sometimes they say, oh, Ramadan is over, let me get the bottle again. Those who are used to committing adultery prior to Ramadan, when it comes to Ramadan, they quit it. And the day of Eid, they start it again. Astaghfirullah. Who became happy? Shaitan. But who gave you the day of happiness? Allah. Those who do not dress in the proper way, Come Ramadan, oh, they look like, mashallah, tabarakallah, real Muslimin. The day of Eid, sometimes on the day of Eid, even those who dress properly throughout the year, they use that day to uncover themselves in a wrong way, in modest dressing with the excuse, al yawm yawm eid nafrah, subhanallah, nafrah. We become happy with the displeasure of Allah, no, no, no. We will change our attitude towards these days of happiness by only doing that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So sometimes we err, uh, we make big mistakes. We do that which is wrong. Look at the days of Eid. I've given you an example how we forget it's a day of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gave it to you to be happy. Do not make shaitan happy on that day. From today on, whenever there is a day of Eid, remember, do not transgress against Allah on that day. A few Eids ago, a few Eids back, there was a young boy whom I was speaking to. And he, I told him, what are you doing? He says, I can't tell you. I said, why? He says, you know, during Ramadan, we were eating dates. You know what are dates? Subhanallah. Dates are tamr. The tamr, they are called dates in English. He says, but today I have a real date. It took me two seconds to understand what he was saying because I was a little bit dumb at that moment. Then I realized it means today he has an appointment with his girlfriend, subhanallah. 
So he said, we did iftar with dates every day, now I will do iftar with a real date. I told him, my, my little son, you have lost the plot. He said, how have I lost the plot? I said, you are wasting the ibadah of the month of Ramadan by choosing to do that which is haram on the day that Allah has given you to be happy. So he says, and this is the problem, when we learn knowledge, let's never learn it to justify what we are doing in terms of wrong. Some people, they learn knowledge in order to justify the wrong that they are doing. But no, we should learn knowledge in order to put it into practice correctly. The young man tells me, look, don't blame me, blame shaitan. I said, what do you mean? He says, I was told in the masjid that shaitan is tied up throughout Ramadan and on the day of Eid he comes out. I'm sure this must have been shaitan. I said, my brother, how can you blame shaitan for your deeds? And then I read him the verse of the Quran. وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعْدَ الْحَقِّ وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا Clear verse of the Quran. Allah says, Shaitan on that day will say, Allah promised you the true promise, but you did not follow. I promised you a false promise, and you came straight through. I had no control over you, subhanAllah. I had no control over you. You're the one who came. So don't blame me, blame yourself. This is why my brothers and sisters, when we are steadfast, we earn the pleasure of Allah. When we are not, we earn the displeasure of Allah. When Allah has given you something, do not go against Him. He gave it to you. Thank Him. Because He says, If you are going to be thankful, by obeying Allah, by saying words of gratitude, I will give you more and more. But if you are showing ingratitude, you are ungrateful, I will take away what I have given you. In fact, he says, my punishment is severe. Severe. And this is why, you know, sometimes you have so much and suddenly it goes away. And you're wondering, why did it go? Why did the nation change? Why is everything changing for the negative? It's because we have changed. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ يَكُ مُغَيَّرًا نِعْمَةً أَنْعَمَهَا عَلَى قَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُوا مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Allah tells us again in the Quran that Allah will not change the ni'mah and the gift that He has bestowed upon a nation unless and until they deserve it because they change themselves in the negative. So when we change ourselves, we become negative. Allah says, I take away the ni'mah that I have given you. This is why, my brothers and sisters, I am here to tell you today and to remind myself when Allah has blessed you with something, thank Him. Don't become a transgressor. Don't become a sinful person. Thank Him more and more. He will, he will give you the most. Primarily, he will keep you happy and content. The Prophet says, The affairs of a true believer are amazing. Everything that happens is better for him. When goodness comes in his direction, he is thankful, so it is better for him. When something bad befalls him or her, he or she bears patience, so it is better for him or her. When you bear patience, Allah rewards you. When you show gratitude, Allah rewards you. Now the question we may have, if we have faulted, if we have done wrong, what should we do? Many times people think, and wallahi I have received this so many times by email, where people say, 
Shaykh, I have committed so much wrong. I think Allah will not forgive me. Have you heard someone say that? I have done so much wrong. I think maybe Allah will not forgive me. Wallahi, I want to show you something. A verse of Surah Al-Zumar. Allah says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah is instructing Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم telling him Tell my worshippers, go and give the news to my worshippers and my brothers and sisters, we are all the worshippers of Allah. So the news is for you and the news is for me. And the news is for the worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who have done wrong against themselves, those who have transgressed against themselves. Why does he say transgress against ourselves? Because when we transgress, we do not harm Allah, we harm ourselves. Someone commits a sin, they are harming themselves, they are not harming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why Allah says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell those who have transgressed against themselves, my worshippers who have transgressed against themselves, never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Don't ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah. So when you say, I don't think Allah will forgive me, you have gone against this particular verse. You are losing hope in the mercy of Allah. So don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. No matter what you've done in the past, there needs to be a day that you change. And Allah says, In Allah يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Allah will forgive all the sins. So you seek that forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't go to the trees, you don't go to the stones, you don't go to the graves and seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You seek it from the owner of forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَقْبِلُ تَوْبَةَ الْعَبْدِ مَا لَمْ يُغَرِّرِ It is Allah who accepts the tawbah, the repentance of a worshipper, for as long as they are not at the stage of dying, known as gharga. So we turn to Allah, but sometimes some people, they read that verse, and then they say, you know, I will commit this sin, because in Allah ghafoor rahim Have you heard them say that? We heard, don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Ah, this is only adultery, it's fine. You know, ah, the people are doing it today. I'm sure Allah will forgive me. My brothers and sisters, what if you die in that condition? What if you die in that condition? Yesterday, we received a clip internationally of one of the people, a muaddin of the Sulaimani Masjid in Jiddah. He passed away before, before the adhan of Salat al-Fajr. He was reading his Quran. You might have seen the clip. And he passed away, subhanallah, in the masjid, in the house of Allah. The people who came into the masjid, they saw this muaddin is in taqala ila rahmatillah. Subhanallah. Why? Because that was his life. He lived that way. He lived that way. And subhanallah, Allah gave him a beautiful death. When a person lives in a way that they do not feel ashamed of the sin they are committing, there is a chance that they will die in that condition. When we see people dying in sujood, you see people die in the masjid. You see people die in the haram. You see people die in reading Quran. We say, oh Allah, give us a good death just like that. Amen. Don't we say Amen? But you don't read Salah, how are you going to die in sujood? You don't read the Quran, how are you going to die while reading the Quran? You don't go to the masjid, how are you going to die while in the masjid? Subhanallah, look at how foolish we are. Oh Allah, give me death while I'm reading the Quran. So one of the boys said, the reason I don't read Quran, I don't want to die. Astaghfirullah, how can you say that? That is foolish. So this is why when you ask Allah for a blessed death, start doing blessed things. Because that is when you will pass away in the correct condition and make a dua to Allah. Oh Allah, do not take us away while we are doing something bad. And stay away from it. Seek the forgiveness of Allah every day. The Prophet ﷺ, he used to seek the forgiveness of Allah 70 times a day, more than 70 times, up to 100 times a day. Did he need it? The answer is no. We are the ones who need it. 
but he showed it to us. It's an example. Imagine if you start your day every day seeking the forgiveness of Allah. You do not just sit in one sitting and say, Stafla, 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 as though you have to complete the number. More important than the number is the sincerity and the understanding. Astaghfirullah means, I seek your forgiveness, O oh Allah. I want you to forgive me. Pause for a moment and think what you are saying. Imagine if you were to say that three times, 30 times, so many times, 100 times every day. One day you will die. The day that you die, if you have that habit, the angels will have written that on this day, this person actually asked your forgiveness, O oh Allah. Ask your forgiveness 30 times and they passed away. Do you really think Rabbul Ghafur is going to say, no, I'm sending him to Jahannam. Do you really think that Allah is going to go against what he says, that I'm going to forgive everyone who seeks the forgiveness? The only time is when we were not genuine. Imagine a person committing a sin. While committing the sin, they are saying, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. What are you doing? While you are committing the sin, you are saying, Allah, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. What is this? Stop it. You have to stop the sin. You have to regret it. Then you say, oh Allah, forgive me. You have to know in your heart, I don't want to do this again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Say, Ameen. So my brothers and sisters, some people, they delay. They don't want to go for Hajj even though they are wealthy. And they say, you know what? It's okay, I'm still young. Subhanallah. I'm still young. You need to go now. Because when the Malakul Maut comes to you, when the angel of death comes to you, he won't say, hang on, hang on, you are still young, let me go back. He will not do that. When Malakul Maut comes, he takes you no matter how old you are. Death knows no age. In your community, my community, people have passed away in all different ages. You know that. So we need to understand, turn to Allah before it is too late. And that is why the next verse, after the verse of hope, there is another verse telling you, hurry up, hurry up. You better make sure you are quick to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to what Allah says. وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابُ ثُمَّ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ Turn back to Allah and surrender to your Rabb. Surrender meaning follow what He is telling you. Follow what Allah is telling you before it is too late. Before the punishment overtakes you and then you won't be helped in any way. No one will be able to help you. So you do not wait for the punishment to come to you. And then you say, oh, I want to turn. Look at the Pharaoh, Fir'aun. He knew he was not the God. But he used to say, Ma alimtu lakum min ilahin ghayri. Oh my people, I don't know of a God for you guys besides me. Imagine how haughty he felt. He knew he was not a God. But he kept on telling his people, I am your God. So he was from among those who was cursed. He did not repent. But when he saw the angel of death, then he decided to repent. What did he say? He says, At that stage he says, Oh, I believe in the deity or the God of Banu Israel and I am now a submitter. I submit. But it was too late. Once you see the angel of death, you cannot declare that you now worship Allah alone. It's too late. Didn't you hear the hadith I mentioned earlier? Allah accepts your tawbah for as long as you do not get to Gharra. Gharra is the point of death where the pangs have already commenced. May Allah grant us tawbah before that. Say Ameen. So Fir'aun, he did not say, I believe that there is no God worthy of worship besides Allah. But he said, I believe in the deity of Banu Israel. Why? Because he used to call himself Allah. He used to say, I am Allah. So if he said, I believe that there... I believe in Allah as the only deity. It might be confusing to the people that he's talking about himself. So he had to clarify this. And then Allah says, 
الآن وقد عصيت قبل وكنت من المفسدين Is it now that you want to turn and you have transgressed all along in the past and you were from among those who were sinful, corrupt too late so you know what happened to the Pharaoh how many of us would like to end up in that way? The answer is zero. No one. So let's turn to Allah before it is too late. In fact, the third verse after that in Surah Al-Zumar, Allah says, وَاتَّبِعُوا أَحْسَنَ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابُ بَغْتَةً وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ Beautiful verses where Allah is reminding us follow the best of revelation follow that which has been revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it is for you follow it before the punishment comes Suddenly, and you won't even have realized it. You won't even have realized it. So let's turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I promise you, there are verses in the Quran, my brothers and sisters, that remind us that Allah becomes so happy with our repentance that He actually converts the bad deeds we've been doing in the past. If we change completely and our life changes, and we only do good deeds after tawbah and after repentance Allah says I will convert the bad deeds into good deeds you know there is an istithna after making mention of the punishment there is an exception that Allah makes mention of at the end of Surah Al-Furqan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it quite clearly إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ مَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتٍ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Allah says, after making mention of the punishment, He says, the exception is for those who engage in repentance and do good deeds thereafter, for them we will convert the bad deeds into good deeds as a bonus, subhanAllah, as a gift from Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah achieves nothing by punishing us. Allah achieves nothing by punishing us. مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ إِن شَكَرْتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ What is Allah going to do by punishing you? If you are thankful, grateful, and you are believing, Allah will not punish you. Allah doesn't achieve anything by that. But the loss is ours if Allah were to punish us. Therefore, my message for you today, three things. Remember these three things. Number one, we worship Allah alone. Number two, we follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as best as we can. Number three, we repent to Allah and we turn to Allah before it is too late. If we do this and if we constantly turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, trust me, Allah will open our doors in this world and the next and He will grant us contentment and happiness. A last point I want to mention before I close. It does not mean that Allah is upset with you when something that you really want in your life does not come in your direction. And it does not mean that Allah is happy with you when you get certain things that others do not have. It is actually your heart, the condition of your heart and the closeness with Allah that determines whether He is pleased with you or not, whether you are poor or rich, whether you have or you don't have. Sometimes we make a dua to Allah for something. You want to marry someone, you want to have a business, you want to go somewhere, you keep on making dua, dua. You are calling out to Allah, supplicating, but for you, it's not happening. Keep on making the dua, keep on hoping, either Allah will give it to you one day as a miracle or as a return of that dua. Allah will grant you much of His favor in the dunya as well as in the akhirah. Sometimes Allah gives it to you later on. Sometimes He removes some calamity from your path 
because of a dua that you've made, sometimes he keeps for you the reward of it in the hereafter. Trust me, the best of the lot is when he has kept it for you in the hereafter. That is the best of the lot. So keep on making dua. Keep on calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will find the doors opening in this world and the next. So my brothers and sisters, once again, I say, I'm indeed extremely delighted to be here in this beautiful country of Ghana and this beautiful city of Kumasi, mashallah. I've been here the last time and we have promoted goodness for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today too, we are reminding ourselves and yourselves to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What a beautiful day. What a lovely message that comes from the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you know that it's important for us to reach out to the non-Muslims around us through our good character and conduct. Many of them think that we promote violence, we promote hatred, we promote killing. That is wrong. That is wrong. That is what the media is telling them. But in real life, we are the ones who promote the peace. We promote the harmony, the goodness, the cleanliness, the uprightness. Let us remember, when you as a Muslim do something wrong, you are insulting Islam. That Islam that was brought by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so you are insulting the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you are insulting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will never harm Allah or his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It will harm you or me if we were to do that. So therefore, let us learn to uplift the deen. Be honest, be upright, be kind. Learn more of the deen. You have so many ulama in Kumasi that sometimes I'm shy to even speak in your midst because I know there are people who hold PhDs in your midst in Islamic studies. Make use of them. Attend their lessons. Attend the lectures. Make sure you attend the classes. Learn what the deen is all about. There are so many sisters who are so active in the deen. They are trying to help. Make use of it. Allah will ask you in your city, I kept Fulan bin Fulan or Fulana bin Fulan. They were working hard. They were teaching this and that. Where were you? Did you not learn from them? You can't say, ah, they were my neighbors, but I was busy smoking cigarettes outside. You cannot say that. Make use of them. Go to the feet of the scholars. Make the time to come. Take a look at the others. How they go to their places of worship in their thousands. Subhanallah. What about the Muslimin? Subhanallah. Even Salatul Jum'ah, we are late running to the masjid last. See in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a Friday after the salam of the Imam, how many people get up in order to complete one unit of prayer? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So remember, we need to make use of the gifts Allah has given us because Allah will take it away one day and He will ask us about the gifts that He has bestowed upon us. Then indeed on that day, Allah is going to ask you about the gifts and the favors He has bestowed upon you. May Allah bless you all. I hope and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every form of goodness and i hope and pray that allah has mercy on us and that we can get up from this majlis from this sitting maghfurin having been forgiven by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyyina muhammad subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk